Look, I'm just a geologist. I like rocks. I love rocks. Great intro. Who wants wants to start this off? Uh, Good evening. Good morning, everybody. This is Steve from the Geology Flannel Cast. Welcome. Hey, this is Chris. And this is Jesse. Welcome again to another great episode. Um, Before we get started, we'd like to thank... Is it 56? 56. Whoa. Uh, Yeah. I got got nothing for 56. I don't know what that... You know um so i don't know <laughs> but <laughs> just another uh, number exactly i'm sure i'm sure someone out there knows what uh 56 for like wedding anniversaries it's like i don't know aluminum, galena aluminum toilet paper or something <laughs> yeah not like a little bit of lead sulfide right there to, uh, <laughs> don't, lick your wedding. don't lick it <laughs> um but thanks for listening everybody um we'd also like to thank our sponsor the formatting formula for all of your word documenting formatting needs, go to formattingformula.com. Uh, you can check out all their YouTube videos that give you simple step-by-step instructions on how to do everything from like some super complex, like changing your settings in your header bar and doing all these funky things that I, you know, I don't need, but you may need. Um, Check them out, formatting formula, forward slash, youtube.com, forward slash C, forward slash, forward, formatting formula. Good gracious, this is terrible today. But I'm just so excited about the formatting formula, I can't help it. <laughs> Steve um, doesn't get out much. I don't, I don't. <laughs> but let's face it, I wrote my master's thesis, what, six years ago? I'd still be formatting it right now if it wasn't for the formatting formula. So <laughs> there you uh, go. Big, big, big special thanks. I'm to savings. Oh, my goodness. You have no, and, and stress, you know, you guys did your PhDs. I did my master's. You guys did your master's. Like it's stressful. The last thing you want to worry about is fitting in a figure or you have to add a figure. So then all the other figures after that figure, now they be rematriculated through. And like, you know, you don't know how many times I just want to be like, can I just call this seven a <laughs> instead of figure seven so i don't have to fix all those figures after this also uh, good good worse good use of yeah <laughs> i can talk good use of the word matriculated right there oh thank you i don't even know if i used it properly but i don't no. think you did but. <laughs> i don't think so either <laughs> um anywho formatting formula I can't say enough nice things about them they've been super friends of the podcast um check them out you know even just you know go on YouTube, watch a video or two, write in the comments. Hey, the geology flannel cast sent me. Um, we'd really appreciate it. They'd really appreciate it. Um, so again, check them out. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash C forward slash formatting formula. Um, check them out. Dot com. You can't, you know, I thought we weren't allowed to sing it anymore. Shoot, yeah. yeah. Um, the lawyers are on us. Yeah. I just, I, I just got a text from a lawyer. We're in trouble. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and also thank you to our Patreons. We actually have a couple of Patreons, Mark and Dennis, listening live right now. We're not live, but they're listening live. So um, keep keep those coming. Watch us on YouTube. Yeah, if you're not, you don't have to. If you can't subscribe on the Patreon right now, you could always uh, like and subscribe us on whatever podcast platform or on YouTube. That's uh, the best way or tell your friends i don't know just tell yeah a friend. Tell a friend. ah that's what we should have uh you know tell a friend august for the whole <laughs> month of august you have to tell a, tell a friend every week rolls right off the tongue yeah tell a friend <laughs> august, <laughs> and, august. And, and your friend doesn't have to be named august i don't maybe you have friends named august maybe you have several friends named august i don't know maybe it was a maybe it's a, a popular name I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we're killing it today. Killing really, it. Really, this is this is one for the record <laughs> books. I don't hear you talking, Chris. I'm just letting you dig your own grave here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just very happy that you know we are actually we can keep our website running. <laughs> we can <laughs> we can keep recording. You know, so that's all. I just want to say thank you to everybody who's supporting us. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. Um, so let's uh, let's jump into. It. I think Jesse's got a got a little short little news story, and then uh, we got our, our main topic of the day. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
I've actually got two. Oh, Ooh. two new stories. Wow. This is, this is, uh, Oh, and one, one little quick sidebar. Uh, if we have any musicians out there, Chris has said he recorded something for Jesse's corner. Jesse said he had something for Jesse's corner <laughs> and I've yet to hear the either one. So I want listeners to send in stuff for Jesse's Corner, and maybe every week we'll have a different intro to Jesse's Corner. I don't care if it's thrash metal or country or rap or whatever. I'll take them all. Yeah, exactly. We should, when are we had um, on Facebook? We were running a contest. Yeah, yes. yeah, we got some some cool some cool we got rock pictures. Yeah, a lot of cool rock pictures really really quickly. So keep them coming, man. Yeah, are we doing another week on that? We'll give it another week. I think so. Yeah, let's right? give it another week. Yeah, I, I yeah. thought we said we were going to give it. Three weeks? I don't know. We figured just a couple weeks. and yeah. uh, We're going to do it through the month of Tell a Friend August. <laughs> we should do it through the month <laughs> of Tell a Friend <laughs> August. Tell a Friend August. See, it's catching on, isn't it? <laughs> uh, cool. Um, yeah, so my two stories. Are you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Let's uh, the first one, jump into um, this. First one's a little depressing. Sweet. That's what I like to hear to really kick off this podcast 2020 keeps giving um canada's <laughs> last fully intact ice shelf has collapsed oh i did hear about this it is yeah. no more. um so an ice shelf is just it's a part of the glacier that is is out over open water now so it's floating on the open water so that would be an ice shelf um the the Milene ice shelf which is at the fringe of um Ellesmere Island, which is up in the northern uh, territory of uh, Nunavut. And I apologize for all of those pronunciations. <laughs> uh, but basically, you know, air t above normal air temperatures, which have been going on there for a while. The Arctic right now is going, going through some weird stuff. Like Siberia is experiencing, parts of Siberia are experiencing above the Arctic Circle are experiencing anywhere from temperature, air temperatures of 30 to 33, 34 degrees uh, Celsius. Whoa! Which is in the 90s, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a little warm for up there. Yeah, normally you're looking at like in the 50s. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Um, so uh, that's Bill and Ted reference. Yeah, we recorded. We were just talking about that. Bill, <laughs> the people that are listening to this podcast, they have no idea what Jesse's talking about. We were just talking about Bill and Ted's, the Bill and Ted movies, yeah. before, right before we started recording. That's yeah. um, so same. Basically, air like really warm air temperatures, plus offshore winds, where they they push currents, which sort of drive these because these ice shelves, glaciers move. They're mobile. And open waters in that part caused it to become basically unstable and broke up. And it was it was about 80 square kilometers, which for for reference, you know, the island of Manhattan, if you look at a map, is 60 square kilometers. So it was it was a huge chunk of ice. Yeah, 55, but who's counting? Ah, <laughs> I, mean, I take I retract this news story as being important. <laughs> but uh the so when the ice shelf detaches it then sinks a little bit right so you're displacing some water in the ocean is that correct no if it's yeah. if it's floating on the ice if it's floating on the ice nothing not the water level doesn't displace no so but the 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 shelf is sticking out there but then once the shelf breaks off doesn't it sink a little uh so part of i think you're thinking of antarctica, antarctica has that weird thing because a lot of it is pushed the it's so thick like the ice shelves push on the lithosphere that they're below sea level so that w if when ice shelves collapse yeah you have this part that's actually below sea level that has to pop up and rebound so you get some weird stuff going on ah there. okay sorry <clears throat> i don't carry I'm, on yeah if there's any if there's a glaciologist or i'll talk to my local glaciologist and yeah <laughs> exact back to but i think that's but normally, the ice that's on the water is already displaced. Archimedes principle tells us. Eureka! That dude, yeah. just taking a bath, taking thinking a bath. about science. Don't we all? 
Yeah, so this is the, I'm I'm looking at this uh, the stats of the the piece of ice that the main it, there's a couple other smaller pieces, but the the main one, like Jesse said, the size of Manhattan, and it's uh, like seventy to 80, 80 meters thick. So that's a it's a nice sized chunk of ice you got now floating around out there, um, and it's moving towards an oil rig. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, two current oil spills going on right now. One off the coast of um, Venezuela. That's not making much news. But there's uh -huh. one off the coast of East Africa um, that's making a lot of news off of like near Reunion Island or <clears throat> I can't, I don't not my, uh, again, my pronunciations um, are, are all terrible, but um, <clears throat> the oil, this, the one off East Africa, the one off Venezuela, there's not a lot sort of known about exactly what happened. The tanker just lost, lost power, or it was no longer um, underway, which means it just got stuck. There's just sort mm. of oil. Huh. Um, the one off East Africa. Um, <laughs> yeah. What are you playing there, Jesse? <laughs> what, what is, there is Mauritius. <laughs> yeah. I dated a girl named Mauritius once. Yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to. What? <laughs> uh, which is, it's off East Africa. It's off Madagascar. Mauritius. I would, be not, I would have blown that. <laughs> um, but it was, it was a tanker that actually ran aground. And it's a shame because it's like, it's it's a natural preserve. There's beautiful beaches and, and coral reefs there. And it's just, it's not great. I think there was 4,000 tons on the ship. They lost about half of it in the water. Oh. Oh. So. Um, That's not, not good for business. Not good. And, but the, the islanders themselves are banding together and, and like they're, they're harvesting grass to stuff into, you know, like beams to put out to soak things up. And so they're all, they're, there's a real nice community effort to sort of, and it's a former French colony. So the French have sent down some help. Cool. So hopefully they deal with it. Hopefully they, you know, yeah. Silver linings, you know, yeah. All, all this, Terrible stuff is happening, but it's nice to see humanity coming together to try to fix it. Try and, yeah. Yeah. Um, What's, well, thanks for bringing us down. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the other news story, which has less of a impact. Ah, literally. <laughs> I like see what you I did, did there. I didn't even do that on purpose. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> the younger, driest cooling, which we've talked about a bunch, Right around 12 and a half, 13,000 years ago, there was a big cooling event where the northern hemisphere went back into glacial conditions. And so most times it's ascribed to the shutoff of the thermohaline circulation, which is the North Atlantic like conveyor belt bringing the, the current brings water up to the North Atlantic and that water is warmed in the tropics. So you bring these tropical warm waters up and it warms the Northern Hemisphere. But if you shut that conveyor belt, if you shut that current down, it would make the Northern Hemisphere cool again. And this happened 12 and a half thousand years ago and there's questions of why this happened. And impacts. It is a group that <laughs> wants to ascribe it to an impact event. But a recent um, paper that came out last week in the journal Science Advances, was looking at sediments from a cave in Texas. Okay. And they say a lot of things are going on, but one of the things that may have led to this cooling, one of my favorites, volcanoes. Ooh. Oh. They say they're in these sediments, you find some... Um, 
rare earth elements and things of that nature that you would find in volcanic eruptions. Mm -hmm. Don't necessarily say where it's coming from. That was my next question. Did the, did the article say? No, not that I, I, I haven't looked at the actual journal article. I'll get into that. I'll, maybe tomorrow I'll read through that. But so they say a lot of these chemical signatures are very similar to what you would see in extraterrestrial signatures. So it may be why this earlier group said it was an impact when they were hmm. saying. Huh. So do, on the, in the, uh, the Texas cave, did it, are, are they finding these rare, um, uh, these rare earth minerals in, um, is there like an, an ash layer or is it just in the sediment? From the story I read, it says, <clears throat> it, it says just the sediment and okay. it looks like they were uh, basically osmium was the big one they were looking at. Mm -hmm. Um, Whoa, that is pretty rare. That's like super dense. Yeah. So um, they were looking at other stuff like iridium and ruthenium and platinum and palladium. And mm -hmm. has, any, has anyone proposed the cartoon theory where an asteroid hits a volcano and plugs it up? Ooh. And then it builds up pressure and then it explodes. So it's actually a volcano spitting back out the meteorite. I don't know, but we can get Tom and Jerry to jump on that one really fast for us if you want. One in a million. Yeah, that might be like a right like there. a wily e. coyote thing right there, maybe. <laughs> the roadrunner. Hey, I'm just saying. They did find pieces of material that said acne TNT. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. But uh I'm, huh. I'm actually I'm pulling up that paper now and I'm gonna read through it and I'll get back to you. And by that, all right, yeah, Chris and I will just continue on the podcast. Yeah, you keep reading. We'll just, we'll just chat here real fast with some. Um, so, how was, your, how, how was your day, Chris? Good, it was splendid. Yeah, it was great. A beautiful day down here. Yeah, you done reading yet, Jesse? I just clicked on science, science advances. <laughs> all right, um, but okay, so. so Debbie, Debbie Downer brought us two Downer stories. Well, one was half Downer, half uplifting. The other one was just, you know, we're all doomed. Uh, natural disaster. Well, then the second one, natural. I mean, I don't know. No, that's what stuff, I'm saying. Stuff happening on Earth. and you Yeah. Know, I don't know. I um, mean, it, it, the climate gets really, really cold, really yeah, somewhat fast. It would be a... We'd have some problems, just as much as the the climate heating up. You know, we hey, we've all at seen the same it. Time, I wouldn't complain as much as I would about the heat. Man, I can't stand humidity. I think uh, reptiles uh, reptiles wouldn't be saying that though. I think they would. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it depends on what level of like uh, a mile of ice where your house is. Well, okay, when you put it like that, <laughs> when you're. Man, I I almost uh, she, she's, she's gonna, just gonna be out there with a hair dryer every day. Yeah. <laughs> Not gonna get me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a Jesse sized hole in the glacier all the way up to the surface. <laughs> so I was uh, I, Jesse. I was thinking of you the other day. I was uh, scrolling as, through as, as you should, as I should, as I, as I do once a day. Really, let's <laughs> recollect on my time with Jesse. <laughs> Only uh, once. <laughs> I had that little shrine for him in the corner. Where I have a little yeah. candle with his picture, you know. <laughs> no, I was, uh, I was, I was going scrolling through my Netflix, and I saw the movie Twenty Twelve is on Netflix right now. Oh gosh, classic! And I was just thinking back in the days when I don't know. This is a little fun fact about the, Jesse and I's, uh, you know, our relationship <laughs> over the years. But I was Jesse's TA in the summer of, I want to say. I don't know, 20, 20, 2010 or something like that. For those of us not in academia, TA stands for teaching assistant. Yeah. So basically Jesse was teaching the class. Semenek was his assistant. Yes. I was under Jesse and I was, I was his Andy Richter to Conan O'Brien. And that's, that's <laughs> Build the best. Build the best. <laughs> no, but I remember we, we, we watched clips from that movie and I was, I was thinking about that, that summer we had, uh, it was an interesting class. We had like 
half of the Temple football team in that class. Yeah. And I just remember the smell of Icy Hot uh, and that, <laughs> that menthol smell <laughs> from after, after their football practice. Like, That's funny. You know, I, I, teach, I teach the same class, and I've only had like one student athlete in my class. We had a bunch of them. And there were some big, big dudes in this class too, from, yeah. from what I remember. Well, fun little fun little side note story there. Oh, that was a good story. Did yeah, you, I, <laughs> you watch it? You should have watched it. No, I, I, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> no, but it was, it was funny. I, I just remember like I'd be sitting in, in your class in the lecture, just kind of like reading through a paper or something like that. And every once in a while, Jesse, but isn't that right, Chris? I just kind of look up. And, yeah, yes. sounds good. Sounds good. All right. <laughs> Go back to reading my papers. <laughs> uh, I too uh, was. They can I, only see us now. <laughs> I too was Jesse's TA for something. Is it physical? I think it was physical geology. I was his TA. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, look at I this. ran the. I ran the labs. I don't even. You probably yeah. do. You even remember? <laughs> no, I honestly because I. No one. Because I ran them so well. That's why. Yeah. You should come to class and sit in, and I just want someone to laugh when I tell jokes. That's all. I, want to do. <laughs> uh, I I think I actually had a class while you were teaching that class, and I couldn't sit in, but I could still I could cover the labs though. You missed out, man. Missed out. Good, just good times. Chris and Jesse show. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse and Chris show. Actually, his name should come first. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So uh, the main topic for today, let's move on to uh, I, I can actually hear our listeners falling asleep right now from, uh, yeah. with that, with that uh, little side note story. Uh, so we're going to be talking about the, uh, we've, been, we've been talking about this for a little bit, but the, um, there's a new continent on the block, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's called Zealandia. And this is a topic that we've been getting a lot of email, not, well, yeah, I would say, yeah, we've gotten a fair amount, a lot of requests to, to cover this topic. And um, so this is what we're going to be talking about today. And I know, um, so Mark, one of our, our, our uh, Patreon sponsors, he's listening. He had, he'd asked for this, this topic to be covered as well. He's Mark's a, a Topaz member. And so mm-hmm. this is part of uh, Mark's, Mark's uh, you know, helping out the podcast. He gets a, you got to pick a, pick a topic. Yes. And, um, Mark so. is the puppet master now. We just dance for him. <laughs> Mark is the captain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we just wanted to so we're gonna talk about this, uh, this continent of Zealandia. And so if you've never heard of this, don't worry about it. It's still, still kind of new. It looks like uh, it was first, uh, first come up, came up in the literature in, uh, what was it, 1995? Is that correct, fellas? No, I, th- I thought it was 97, but 95 might be correct. 97? All right, um, I was going to say mid, <laughs> mid to late 90s. There you go. Uh, Chris, I do have a whole song and dance. Like, this is the age of Zealandia. No? Do you want me to oh, save that for I mean, later? Or? No, you can <laughs> just keep on digging that ditch, man. Just go ahead. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? The, the end of the 40-year-old virgin, <laughs> the age of the Aquarius, where he starts oh, dancing cool. around. I don't remember that. Uh, I mean, it's a great movie. I love the movie. Yeah, I, and uh, you know, that's a that's a contemporary movie for me. I think that was only you know fifteen years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that came out right after Anchorman because that was like Steve Carell's like, oh man, this guy was so funny in Anchorman. That was like his like follow up movie. Ah, uh, but yeah. All right, no, I'll hold it off. You know? No, I think you should do it. No, you know? that, maybe maybe we'll save that for our Topaz like, members for is after. That like our, our like after. Like yeah. the, the extra, the Patreon extra. Yeah. So there you go. Well, you it's a little see- teaser out there. So if you're not a Topaz member, maybe you want to become one. Actually, to see that, you would just have to be a, a Quartz member. Wouldn't you have to go up to Topaz, Steve? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Let's- <laughs> anyway. So, Move yes, uh, mid to late 90s, this became. 90, it, is, it's, it was 95. Like um, I said. It was, yes. I, a few years before 97 is what I said, I think. Okay. So, <laughs> Zealandia, if you're wondering where the heck this continent is, it is basically covers the, the part of New Zealand that's sticking up out of the water is only a portion of this. And it's a, it's a fairly large uh, plot of, of Earth. It's actually about half the size of Australia. So, that gives you a sense for the, for the geography of where this thing's at. 
So Zealandia is this nearly submerged mass of continental crust, and this thing subsided after it broke away from Gondwana. So we're going to go off on a little side note here on moving from Zealandia we, to really talk about Zealandia. Excuse me. <coughs> well, to really talk about Zealandia, we need to go back in time to pre-Cambrian time and talk about Gondwana. So here's a good, good topic of, of debate for us, gentlemen. Uh, Gondwana, I've seen, is listed as a supercontinent, but then in the beginning, people said that it wasn't a supercontinent. Yeah, it was like the redheaded stepchild of supercontinents because there were a few little land masses, and by little, pretty significant land masses, yeah. not actually attached. Um, yeah, uh, Laurentia was the big one. Yeah, it wasn't in it. No yeah. dice. Yeah. Africa and so. Siberia as well. Okay, so Laurentia for the the non geol. Okay, so let's let's break this down now because I, I I don't want uh, the non geologist to like, yeah. like what the heck because this this can get a little. If you're not familiar with these terms, you're probably like, "What'd you just call me?" So, <laughs> Laurentia is basically the old, like, ancient name for North America before it was North America. So that's a very watered down answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Just, si Siberia's just, had the same name for half a billion years. Yeah, Siberia's been around for a long time. And Baltica is, you know, essentially the Baltics. There you yeah. go. Done and done. All right. So let's. So that was this supercontinent ish you can't get in trouble for saying that right ish no super con super continent ish a large continental mass um well those weren't even in gondwana <laughs> gondwana was let's see if i get this right off the top of my head it was modern day um south america uh africa antarctica india and australia yes and is that right Europe? Did I, anything? I thought Europe. Anyway, a lot. Most okay. of the continental crust. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it is it, a nice, nice chunk of land. So this thing existed from. It pretty, was a nice chunk of land. It was really. It was, yeah. it was pretty big. Okay, so let's go back. This thing kind of came together in, in the end of pre Cambrian time. Um, so, like 550 and, million years ago. Yeah, yeah. So, like, end of Precambrian, beginning of of um, um, Cambrian. Cambrian. Thank you. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> I get nervous doing this podcast, people. No. <laughs> and it hung around until the Jurassic period. Uh, they say it, it kind of started to break up about 180 million years ago. So, um, and then let's see. So. Gondwana came together, all these, these continental masses kind of crashed into each other, and, and it's called it's a process of accretion, all right? So all these, these cratons, these really old, um, basically land masses, came smacked together, boom, and it kind of gets all glued together. And during the Paleozoic era, uh, Gondwana was actually the largest piece of continental crust on Earth, and it covered about one fifth of the Earth's surface, the twenty percent of the Earth's surface, um, was Gondwana. So this is like this is a nice sized chunk of land, and so this the continent of Zealandia, which we're talking today, was a part of Gondwana, right? Um, and so this thing broke up. All right, so uh, we the, what I was going to say, we should say that. Did you mention at one point Gondwana? actually does run into Laurasia, Laurentia, and Siberia to form Pangaea. Yes. And then it breaks up. Yes. So yes, yeah. when, you, when you see those stickers that say reunite Pangaea, they're pretty funny. But when you see a bumper sticker that says reunite Gondwana land, now that's just classy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I tell the real ones. Exactly. So, uh, like when you think of, <clears throat> um, I don't know, the Appalachian Mountains or whatnot, like that's, we're, we're picturing Laurentia running into Gondwana then, which was like 300, 300 odd million years ago. Yeah, three, 
fifty three. Yeah, yeah. Track. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, and it happened multiple times where you know smashed together, separated, smashed together. But but in this particular case, we're talking about boom, Pangea. Boom. So boom. anyway, Chris, back to you. Uh, bring, it, bring it home, buddy. <laughs> All right. Breaking. So we got Pangea now. Um, you know, we got this enormous now, the, the true supercontinent, I guess you could say, landmass. And that's all, you know, like, that's all eventually going to split up. And you're going to have the Atlantic Ocean, you know, splitting off uh, North America from Africa, Eurasia, and then South America is going to split off later. And all this fun stuff happens. Mm-hmm. All right. So is the Atlantic Ocean the Yoko Ono of Pangea? Of Pangea. Yeah, yeah. So Atlantic Ocean split up. That's sure. <laughs> Chris has no time for me today. <laughs> not feeling it. He's not feeling it. <laughs> Give me nothing but gems all night. No, buddy. I, was, I, I was trying to think of something funny to say there, but I just, I, I just complete my like brain fart. I had nothing. I was, I was more frustrated at myself, really, than you. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm taking my aggression out on you. No, it's fine. So Yoko breaks up Pangea. Carry on. Yeah. Can we yes. do like a letter from her lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty cool if we yeah. actually uh, <laughs> we, we, have to, frame, we would frame that. <laughs> we have to read a statement. <laughs> I'll be all right. I, I would just be impressed if Yoko Ono was listening to a geology podcast. <laughs> That's what I'm right. saying. Yeah. Yeah. I'll so if re- anyone listening out there knows Yoko, yeah. If Yoko becomes a Patreon, we'll tell re- her we said what's up. <laughs> All right, so, Jesus. <laughs> All right, so then this, the continent of Zealandia, it, it breaks off of Gondwana, and then it becomes submerged underwater about 23 million years ago. And today, about 93% of this continent is submerged underwater. So I guess like the, just the one point, it just goes to show you, number one, you know, how much we still – you know, this is a relatively new continent that was proposed, it said back in, back in 1995. So 20, 25 years ago, this thing was first proposed. It's not, that's really not that long ago, you know? And, and so, no, you think about 25 years before that plate tectonics was still not being accepted. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> so this thing, this thing gets submerged and uh, like I said, it's under the Pacific Ocean. And essentially, I guess you could say, like, the only part that's sticking up out of the water now is, is New Zealand. So, is that why they had... call it New Zealand? Because Zealandia was so old? Ooh. <laughs> I know it's not. It's not. <laughs> Again, just hit the mute button, Chris. I just... <laughs> you can just mute me. <laughs> no, I, I need to get my old soundboard that we have. Oh, the crickets? The I, crickets. I, I hated the crickets. Yes, <laughs> 1.0, the, the beta version, I guess you could say. <laughs> uh, All right. So we actually, like I said, we've been getting questions about this Zealandia topic on, on you know, what, what, what is this thing and how did it come about? And, and um, I apologize in advance. I, uh, I know somebody sent a question and this is a really, really good question, a really interesting question. And like I said, I apologize in advance. I forgot who sent this to me. Um, if, if you're out there, you remember sending in this question, shoot us an email. Um, but this person asked, well, if it's a continent, how did it get submerged? Why isn't it like, you know, like sticking up like a, yeah, exactly. What? That's a great question. That is it a great is. question. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I really, like I said, I apologize. I, I know that's one question I remember somebody, somebody sent in, and I, uh, I don't remember who it is. So let let us know if you sent that question, and we'll give, give you a shout out on the podcast in the next episode. So the reason that this thing got submerged was a result of late Cretaceous crustal thinning, preceding the supercontinent breakup of 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 Pangaea. All right, so this uh, the the crust starts thinning, and as a result, um, there is this thing called um, um, like oh, isostat- the the isostatic balance. All right, so what that means is that these continents are kind of just floating on top of 
on top of the Earth's mantle. I think Jesse in a in an episode about ten years ago said it wasn't ten years ago. It was was it a long time ago? Jesse used the the analogy of or the metaphor of the continents, like was it chips on honey? Is that what you used? Oh yeah, like, ah, I remember that. Years and years and years ago, as you can kind of think. I always, I remember that because I, I hated that. I'm sorry, Jesse. I, <laughs> oh. And now that you're saying it out loud, I do not. I was like, that is not a great analogy. <laughs> but now I'm hungry. Oh, if it's, it's metaphor. If it's an analogy, you use yeah. like or as. Chips on like barbecue sauce, maybe? Like, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know why you'd say chips on honey. Like, well, know. honey has a viscosity that. So it would float. Oh, okay, okay. I see where you're going. But I'm just thinking like, I don't want to eat a chip with honey. But if a chip's on barbecue, no, you, I'll some kind of sicko. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, chocolate this... chips. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah. So this thing was 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 thinning essentially, right? And and as a result, it subsided down. All right. We we see like the the continents that are sticking up out of the water are, are very thick and have um they're just they're very thick and, and these things are yeah, floating they like they're floating on top of the earth's mantle deep roots yeah yes they're, they're yeah so that's why this this continent became submerged because it's just sort of thinning out um, all right so you can uh i saw a, a nice visual display of continental crust and how to explain how much is sticking up out of the water versus not and it was um, blocks of wood, sliced blocks of wood. So imagine like a, a two by two, a two by four, two by six, two by eight, two by 10, a two by 12, you know, and then imagine them floating in water. Now the, the two by two is basically going to be like floating, but it's, it's going to be, you know, just barely sticking up. Now the two by twelve is going to be sticking up the highest, but it's actually going to have a lot more of the overall mass below the water table, kind of like somewhat like an iceberg, just not to that extreme as an iceberg. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So That's, you you yeah. if you have a deep thick continental crust, you're going to have more sticking up out of the ocean. If you have a really thin continental crust, chances are you're going to be under the ocean. Very well put, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take this compliment. I'm going to mute myself and just sit back for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> Do the George Costanza. Thank you. I'm out of here. Go I'm out. <laughs> All right. So this, the next topic I want to talk about is, is a topic, uh, a topic for, for debate amongst us. We, or we kind of were talking about this before we started recording, but um, you know, what, what's the difference between a microcontinent and a continent? Is there, is there a hard, like a hard definition for this thing? Yeah. So let's give one more stat about Zealandia. How, how big is Zealandia? All right. Well, Zealandia is. Zealandia is so big. Oh, I thought it was like a, your mama joke or something. No. Well, I have like an exact number. I could tell you like, <laughs> yeah. Steve, guess what? It's 4,920,000 square kilometers. Square kilometers. kilometers. Oh, yes. we said it at the same time. We beat you. Beat you, uh. Jinx, buy me a Coke. <laughs> so what does that mean? Okay, congratulations. 4.9 million square kilometers. All right. So that's more than twice the size of the next largest microcontinent. And it's more than half the size of the Australian continent. I should say by size, I mean area. All right. So, you know... This, this conversation, so we say, like, what's the, what is the difference between a, a microcontinent and continent? This kind of reminds me of the conversation that people have had over the planet Pluto. Well, I, I don't know if you can call planet Pluto's on a planet anymore, but planet, yeah. planet toy. Oh, a dwarf planet versus a real planet, you know, and like. Uh, too soon. <laughs> what? <laughs> Poor Pluto. We sh- uh, have we ever talked about Planet Nine? Or Planet X, we have not. I uh, know. I think. Uh, uh, no, I think we briefly, did bring it up like, briefly. Like, yeah, like the other week or something like that. I don't know. It's been. I'm a obsessed while. with it, so I want to bring it up every time. Yeah, we haven't talked about it enough. <laughs> Do you think it's the golf ball-sized black hole floating around out there? 
<laughs> I, I do not. But, um, I'm open. I'm open to anything. It's probably just aliens. I hope. Oh, that would be cool. Yes, Bob Lazar, what's going on out there? Uh, but no, with regards to the microcontinent versus continent thing, it, it's funny. My, I was my wife, you know, is somewhat engaged in this. That might be generous, but uh, <laughs> she asked, like, "Oh, what are you talking about tonight?" And I said, "Oh, we're talking about Zealandia," and and she said, "What? What is that?" And I'm like, it, "It's a fairly new continent, you know, like." It's kind of a subcontinent and she's like well what's the subcontinent i'm like like india was a subcontinent and then it smashed into asia and she's like well how big does a continent have to be to be a continent versus a microcontinent and i was like i don't know i gotta go <laughs> <laughs> and immediately she just saw a steve shaped cloud as you were gone <laughs> i don't want to talk about it <laughs> exactly no so let's uh so to answer this question, let's also um, let's also uh, shoot out some more stats on on Zealandia real fast. All right, so we know that it's you know it's more than twice the size of the next largest microcontinent, but it's like half the size of Australia. All right, um, so the region where Zealandia a, a is actually has an elevated bathymetry. So if you don't know what the term bathymetry means, think of it as like topography of, you can't say topography, obviously, but it's like the topography of the bottom of the ocean floor. All right. It's how much is this thing sticking up off the ocean floor? Uh, so it's, it's elevated. It's, it's sticking up. It's, it's much higher than the surrounding ocean floor. So it's, it's, it's that's, it's doing that thing. Um, <laughs> and it's, I don't know. It's got, it's got a high bathymetry. Um, it has a lot of uh, diverse and silica-rich rocks, right? So the ocean floor doesn't really have that much uh, silica. The ocean floor tends to be comparatively, yeah. yes, tends it's to be still native. like fifty percent silica, but it's it's not as much as the as the yes. as the continent. So it's I it's, just so want to be. I don't want to get emails. Okay, <laughs> I know you get the emails. I, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's got it's got a uh, you know there's a couple things going on, um, and they and, and the the continental structure itself is relatively thick. I know we said it kind of thinned out, but it's still still uh, you know relatively thicker. It's thicker than than uh, ocean floor crust, so it, it's got all this stuff going on, um, you know. So then it brings to the question: What is the definition of a continent? And this was actually covered. In uh, in a paper, uh, we will actually post this paper on the uh, on the Flannelcast website. Uh, when did this come out? This is all right. So this came out three years ago in um, in the March April 2017 edition of GSA Today. The paper's entitled "Zealandia: Earth's Hidden Continent." There's um, many authors on this paper, and they use the term. Um, they, they, and they, they specifically talk about like what is what is the definition of of a continent and uh, basically at, at first it's just kind of this uh, uh, you know essentially it, it was kind of this arbitrary definition like the the definition of a continent geologic and they looked at the ecology too but they said it well, they're claiming it's a drowned continent, right? So, um, are you talking about the GSA yeah. Today paper? Yeah, yeah. I'm just. Yeah. Uh... They were so <clears throat> basically they're saying it's um, it's never been regarded part of Aus as Australia. Um, they 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 say the four there's four traits they use the elevation, like you said, the bathymetry. The geology, because the geology that makes it up is basically continental crust in right. In so the, the higher silica content. Yeah. Um, uh, they did something with dating of the geology too. So crustal structure would be the the density of it being continental. Yep. Low viscosity. Also, yeah. Yeah. They also did. Um, um, <clears throat> what is it? Um, Reos dating which is just a nice dope dating, 
where they looked at the ages and the ages were go topes go topes they were um <clears throat> old like 2.7 billion year old rock hmm. which indicates that it's not newly formed oceanic yeah. But yeah, oceanic yeah. crust tends to be much much younger than that yeah exactly because it's constantly being re circulated yeah or re well, made made i guess not remade made and then they just they looked at the limits and the extent like the area and they they said how it fit in with <clears throat> um the other continents in terms of area versus large igneous provinces and other microcontinents and it it fits more on the end of being continental in the amount of it submerged versus the amount of it how big it is it's big yeah yeah and, and so ultimately they they come down in this in this article and they say um that like i mentioned before uh that uh, you know what's the difference between a continent and a microcontinent uh you know it, it could be considered an arbitrary exercise it's kind of like you know whatever whatever your definition is you know right but so they kind of throw out this definition and they they suggest in this paper you know they says we propose that the name continent be applied to regions of continental crust that are greater than one million square kilometers in area and are belt bounded by well-defined geologic limits so steve to answer your question by this definition india prior to its collision with eurasia would be termed a continent bam <laughs> Woo! And again, I'm okay with that. It's big enough. <laughs> it's it's pretty you big know, area. I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. But what boggles my mind is you you see these plate tectonic maps. You know, we we anyone who's taken even an intro to geology class has seen a plate tectonic map. They are fairly detailed and like, you know, in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge are like zigzaggy, you know, that there's a lot of time and effort that's gone into these geologic maps mm -hmm. that we all grew up with. Now you're telling me there's a gigantic plate we missed. <laughs> like how yeah. cool was that? Well, that, that, think... that we didn't just take it for like, okay, like this is what we knew. This is what we're going with. We're carrying on. Like, this is awesome mm -hmm. to me. This is really, really cool. And again, it's been around for 25 years, but it's, you know, it, it takes a lot, you know, as we talked about with the KT boundary or the younger dries or any of these other, you know, slightly controversial topics, they take a long time for people to get on board. Yeah, sure. Um, and I think, uh, well, you know, like back in the, when plate tectonics was first coming around, they were trying to figure out the, the, the plates. It was, I know like the, the first thing I always teach you is that it's based on like earthquake seismic, seismic, um, uh, right. And data. You know, where yeah. yeah where are your earthquakes occurring where are the volcanoes occurring and if you just look at a, a a map showing the location of earthquakes over just the course of the year just one single year you can actually see all of the earth's plates like outlined right so um that brought me to another question i had about this is didn't they see the outline of zealandia from the earthquake data or am i digging myself a hole right now that's a I, question. Uh, yeah because yeah. that like that's because that was the first thing when i when i heard this article yeah. i was just wondering wouldn't you see the outline of the continent from just the earthquake data um, yes yeah it it depends yeah, because think of like the sutured edge of the Atlantic coast of the United States. Yeah. Like yeah. somewhere between, let's say, Philadelphia or Atlanta and the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, we go from continental crust to oceanic crust, but there's no big mm -hmm. defined earthquake line. You know what I mean? But there was when it was being formed. Yes. Like in the, there, middle, in the middle of there, the Atlantic Ocean... See what I'm saying? Like, I, I okay. But, I but think, your, I think I your, your mid, -Atl your mid Atlantic Ridge. Yeah. Is spewing out new oceanic crust. Mm -hmm. it, you know, the, the continental crust is not right there at the mid Atlantic Ridge. There's a huge, yeah, huge <laughs> section of oceanic crust before you actually get to that, uh, 
sutured edge of continental crust to oceanic crust. That oceanic crust is not like subducting. You're not getting like stuff you get on the West coast of the United States. It's just kind of there. Mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. kind of moving away from Europe slowly. So you think about it, uh, an, a uh, continental edge like that, there is no line of earthquakes that you can see every year. There's no, there's yeah. no specific like, boom, there's the continent and there's the oceanic plate I in, think the, in the Atlantic ocean. I think part of it too is you see um, you see the what would it be the the northeastern edge of it where it's where the Pacific Plate meets Zealandia. Yes, because they're running into each other. Yes. So where Zealandia meets Australia, you don't because mm-hmm. they're moving in the same direction. Right. And so because you have no resistance, they're moving the same, you're not going to get earthquakes. Right. Like what Steve okay. is asking, what Steve's saying about yeah. North America, where North America meets the Atlantic Ocean, because they're moving in the same direction, you're getting no resistance, so you have no earthquakes. All right. I think that's, I think that's the point you were making. Yeah, so, so, you know, if you look at the bathymetry of the Atlantic coast, you see like this big gradual, like, you know, underwater beach and then all of a sudden bloop, like the cliff you know this yeah. shelf slope break there um without that it, it would kind of be hard to define where one ends and where one begins so i'm guessing that's what was going on in zealandia you just kind of assumed like oh there's some ridges here and there's some rifts here but like you know Maybe at one point Australia tried to start breaking apart, but then didn't. And they just assumed that Sealandia was part of Australia. And now they're saying, nope, we got evidence that says, you know, we have, you know, a couple failed rip zones. I, and I some, see. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. That. I'm looking at a, a tectonic map of the area. Yeah. And, and the old ones are saying, yeah, that. Zealandia and Australia, the Australian plate and Zealandia are all in the same, the same thing, but all right. All right. I, I see. Interesting. Interesting. Anything else you need me to explain to you, Chris? No, I think uh, one, one per podcast. <laughs> before, so. I'm glad you're on board though. I'm glad yeah. You're around. Yeah. You get, you get my nod. Okay. My, <laughs> my approval. So, well, there you have it. That's uh, that's kind of the nuts and bolts of Zealandia. You know, good solid 522 million years in the making. Or is it 540? What did we say it was? Uh, uh, I know it was over 500. 550, 550. 550, 550. yeah. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, 550. Yeah. But, you know, there there are some ridges. There are some failed rifts. You know, it, Zealandia is pretty pretty cool. It's a pretty interesting place. Um, we have a friend of the podcast, Matt, who's living in New Zealand right now, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. He, better be, he better be listening. Speaking, yeah. of, speaking of which, um, the last time he was on, he was doing work up in at Mount Sinabung in Indonesia. That's right. It just erupted. Did it really? Yeah. How about that? Wow. Like, like, like very recent? Oh, today. Oh, today. wow. Like, oh, wow. wow. I would have brought it up earlier, but it just sort of popped up on my email. Uh, today, meaning so you, you August. got an email saying like, hey, Jesse, Mount Cinnabon just erupted. Yeah, get ready. Get yeah. <laughs> Come in your, every next, year. next summer is going to be so cold. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Jesse Thornburg's in, in like one of those like uh, super boardrooms of scientists <laughs> that they, he just gets alerts and like he, a jet comes and picks him up and he's got to fly away. This so is he sad. Can fix it. When you put away your swimsuit for the season, don't even bother <laughs> getting it out next year. <laughs> oh man! So this will this will be good. We'll see see how that eruption. Here's what we do, Ryan. If you're listening, all right. See how this eruption relates to. Oh well, uh, you need to see how big the eruption is. The 19, how much yeah, cash. how does it? How does it? Yeah, it's probably not as. Yeah, not as and anyway, the, uh, for the, for those of you who are listening, we'll probably post this on. August 11th, but today is actually August 10th. So we're recording it Monday night. <laughs> In case anybody's, you know, we're, we're talking about a very specific, very specific time yeah. event that just happened. Yeah. It so. is 
10.33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, August 10th, 2020. Timestamp. Wow. 10.34. Wow. <laughs> well, mine says 10.33. So Get on that atomic time, son. Uh, I think you're just further... Nope. That would yeah, be yeah we go the other way. We go the other way. Snaps. Anyway. All right. Here, this is falling apart rather quickly. So uh, uh, yeah. But that yeah, we can talk about Mount Cinnabung next time. I hope uh the geothermal plant and everything is holding up there. Um, I wonder. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. We can ask we can ask good good friend of the show, Matt. Yeah. Anyway. We'll see. Um, we'd like to thank all our listeners again. We'd like to thank formatting formula again, and don't forget it is uh, tell a friend August. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I get the feeling it's going to spill over into tell a friend September and tell a friend October? Hey, uh, then it might be like, sucks. Just tell a friend, all right? Make it yeah. make it a little better for us. How about that? All right. <laughs> I, uh, tell a relative Ooh. October. It's anyone. Yeah. Anyone that can download a podcast. Yeah. Or can subscribe on YouTube. How about anything with an opposable thumb? Yeah. But if, if you think about it, uh, we get paid like, I don't know, 0. 0.00001 cent for every time, every minute of play on YouTube. So no, if you just... That's... No. No, you're right. It's like less than <laughs> that. But uh, if you play all our podcasts just in the background all the time on YouTube, you know, just listen to... Just, how calming and soothing are these podcasts? I mean, it's really, it's, it's essentially, you should just give up yoga and listen to this. I have nothing to say. I, I have nothing to say. So if you like the podcast, <laughs> you can subscribe, you can get the podcast on YouTube or any uh, podcast. I don't know what they call it. Catching platforms. platforms, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> what are those things on them? Their computers, <laughs> podcast thingamajiggers. Um, I don't know. You guys know oh. where to find. You're obviously listening now, so you know where to find the podcast. But uh, if you like it, subscribe. Um, check out. We put the podcast up on as YouTube videos as well. If you want to see all of our beautiful faces, um, and yes, Steve's face only a mother can love. Very good. <laughs> Um, and uh, what else? We have Facebook.com slash Geology Podcast. Uh, Geo, uh, Geology Podcast. Wow, I don't know the name of our podcast. Facebook.com slash Geology Flannelcast. <laughs> uh, and we're at Geo Flannelcast on Twitter. Uh, yeah. Else? Thanks again to our Patreons. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for our. our we have a few Mark and Dennis who are listening now. And, you know, if you subscribe, uh, you too could be possibly a part and listen to us live. Come hang out with us. Dennis said, great show. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks That's for lying nice. to us, Dennis, all the way to the end. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, please uh, make sure you tell a friend. It's tell a friend August. So. <laughs> all right. All uh, right. Thank you, everyone. We love you guys. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Good night. All right. Good night. Bye.